So I want you to imagine that you come into this room and you find this object. Now I want you to think that you don't know what this is. You have never seen it before. You don't know how to use it. You have no idea how it works. But it's in the room with you. Now I want you to imagine that you have to stand on this room for countless hours. 12, 24 hours. And at some point, I can guarantee you that any body in this room would sit on this object. So what I'm going to talk uh, to you today is about using intuition and innate behavior and how you can develop a product and even a global company, because that's my story. That's how I have achieved a global business along with my husband. And I hope that I can inspire you today with a few basic concepts on how to trust your ideas, develop a product, develop a global business, all thinking on your own terms. So one thing that I think is very interesting about humans is that we are 99.9% .9 identical into the genetic level. We are very, very similar in the genetic level. And that means that we not only look about the same, we think a lot alike as well. So this is a very interesting concept because it will help you not, yet, not only to create a product, but it will help you to spread that idea globally. So I think that any of us here in the room have come about a little difficult or problems or we look at something and we wish it was different or worked differently and we have created little hacks that have uh, improved the experience with a specific situation, right? So yeah, that concept in itself is something that I have used not numerous times to develop products for our company. I have looked into my own uh, response to specific problems, and I have um, developed products that I thought attended to my needs, hoping that those would attend to the needs of a lot of people around the world. Now, the other part of being 99.9 .9 similar on how we think and how we react to things is that a lot of people can do that as well around the world. A lot of people will come about a little uh, problems or a little challenges, and they very likely will come up with a solution that we all would be able to come up to at some point or another. Some people will do that first, some people will do that later, but at some point, we'll definitely develop that basic solution. So, my point being, Never doubt your instincts. Trust your instincts. If you have an idea, if you have a need, if you have something that you wish were different, you can make sure that millions of people around the world will have that exact same need, that exact same um, wish for that specific solution. So we have established that because we all are very, very similar, and even the way, the way that we natively, natively respond to challenges and how intuitively we are about uh, the problems that we encounter, we can establish that we can all create solutions um, based on our needs. So if that was what it takes to, to develop a global business, we all will have a global business, right? But what happens is that if you really want to stand out, it's important that you bring a layer of innovation into that idea. So your idea can stand out and you can turn that into uh, a business. So innovation has been core for us to develop a global company. Um, I am actually a veterinarian. My husband is a civil engineer and we own a beauty company. So everything that we have done throughout these 10 years that we've had this company has been based on my own intuition, my own needs, and the same thing with my husband. And we did that by observing our own interaction with products and also by observing the, the, the client interaction and needs with, with products. You guys have no idea how resourceful social media has been for us, and especially YouTube, for me to research what the needs are to develop products. So speaking about using innovation and bringing your basic idea to a next level, I always get very inspired by Apple products that are very intuitive and packaging specifically. I'm very think about packaging and how it opens and how it works. 
And I am always inspired by how Apple is able to do this in such an intuitive way. You know, you pick up an Apple product and it's so easy to open and, you know, go through that packaging. It's almost like you do it without thinking, you know. So I think that Apple is a company that definitely uses intuition and innate behavior uh, on their favor to develop uh, innovative ideas. Now, this is what we do. Uh, our company sells makeup and makeup brushes. Now, bear with me that I am actually a scientist, you know, a veterinary, but actually worked with um, genetic fingerprinting and vaccine development. And my husband's an engineer. And this is our product. So, we developed this company um, selling makeup brushes. And at some point, I had to clean my own makeup brushes. So I went to YouTube and I went to research how do people clean their makeup brushes because I wasn't able to clean it. So I went to YouTube, learned uh, how people were doing it, and uh, they were mixing olive oil with dish soap and just rotating the brush in the palm of their hands. And I tried that, I tried several times, and it wouldn't work, it wouldn't remove the dirt from my brush. One day, I was on, my, on the sink of my bathroom, and I was, I had a little uh, silicone texture, silicone tool that I used to clean my face with, and it was sitting by the sink. And as I tried to clean my brush, I looked at that, and I thought, well, maybe I should try to clean it, in a texture surface, because that will probably be more efficient than my own hand. And as I did that, it cleaned my brush in seconds. That just created a light bulb on my head, because after that, I thought, wow, Texture silicone, texture silicone really cleans the brush super fast. So I went to the internet and I bought every single texture silicone you can imagine. So after I had all those uh, silicone textures with me, I placed them in a tray. I glued them with super glue, you know, and I was timing myself cleaning my makeup brush to see which textures would clean it better. At the research that I was. So um, after that, my husband passed by and he said, don't people clean their brushes using their hands? So why don't you transfer all these textures into a globe and then people innately, innately or intuitively use the globe to wash their brushes? <coughs> and that's what we did. So this is one of the first products that we created. I just made my hand a bionic hand. I just improved the way that my hand was cleaning those brushes a lot by researching the textures that were available and developing other ones that will help me uh, do everything that I would naturally do with my own hand. I would rotate the brush uh, in the palm of my hand, I would rinse it along my fingers, and I would pressure it between my fingers here to remove the water. And if you look at that product, that enhances everything that I was doing with my own hand. So that's a lot of what we do. We pick up uh, innate behavior and we pick up what people do intuitively and we turn it into products. If I start showing you guys what kind of products we have, you would be like, you guys are crazy, you know? What does this even do? <laughs> and the thing about innovation is that, that's so interesting, is this curve of adoption of your innovation, you know? And when you put the product out there, uh, you will have people that will adopt it right away, and you will have people that will never touch it, that are at the end of the, the curve there. And there are several factors that will affect how your product will go global, or how this curve of adoption will move forward. Uh, budget being one of them, uh, the people that have the resources will adopt it uh, faster, and um, those that don't have that resource available will think about it more. In, uh, investing in innovation, and uh, the way that this information is spread out is also very important. For us, social media has been crucial to explain, expand globally. We were using concepts where um, we were uh, capitalizing on behavior and, and uh, turning those into products, so that's a, a big step in the right direction because I want people to pick up the products and know exactly what to do. Uh, without having to explain it in, uh, too much. And social media has been critical for us to expand globally. Uh, when we launched this company 10 years ago, YouTube was the main uh, social media that was available. 
And uh, we had one YouTuber put a video about uh, our rushes on the internet, and we sold out of 500 sets we had on my basement, and had 2,000 people get into a waiting list to obtain that product. So this can move that um, adoption of your ideas super fast. Now, when you put an innovation out there, you have to be ready for uh, the heartbreak of people hating it, you know, and not even knowing what it is, or don't even want to try it because it looks so weird. So here is the first YouTube video that went up when we did our first product, which was the One Pan Globe. And he uh, was a very famous makeup artist in England, and he shredded it. She said, this is a glorified open globe. And uh, <laughs> one thing that was interesting is that when I was developing it, I never thought about an open globe. I thought about a tray with textures that my husband suggested I put it on a globe, and that's what I did. But the end of the product did look like an open globe. So <laughs> the important lesson here is that although watching that video just like broke my heart, I listened to it and I changed the product. So I changed the product uh, for the shape of it, and I changed the product for the price of it, making it more accessible and making the client see the benefit of using it. The third part that's very important when you deal with innovation and you introduce new concepts is intellectual property protection. That has been very important for us. You know, as you come up with a new idea and you put innovation, technology, and science behind it, and you create a completely new product that people have never seen before, I can't stress enough the importance of protecting that intellectual property, and that's what we have been doing with our products, so we can expand globally and we can own that market. We have several patents around the world, we have 60 patents now on products, and we do business with over 70 countries. And uh, a, lot, a lot of the patents that we have protect our major markets like uh, US, Europe, Southeast Asia. But one of the most important steps that we have taken into protecting our innovations was to patent where it was produced, which is in China. So uh, our patents in China are very important because we can stop counterfeit uh, products right where it starts in the production uh, of the products. So, what I wanted to pass on as a message for all of you today is that one, if you have an idea, if you have a business, two, you have to go beyond what everybody would do and bring some new layer of innovation into it that will guarantee you that you have a good product and that will expand globally, especially if you use your own thoughts and your own behavior to develop that product. Once you have that idea, it's important for you to, pro to protect it in all the markets that you want to reach. And that will facilitate that you can uh, achieve a global business. So my challenge for you today, coming from a veterinarian that owns a beauty company, <laughs> which did not use makeup before I had this company, is that if you have an idea, you should trust it. Trust your guts and develop it, protect it, and run with it.